Today, Round Oak, South Carolina is mainly known by the 2,136 people who call it home and by folks traveling to larger towns in the low country. Roundo is situated in Colleton County between the towns of Walterboro, Cottageville, and Jacksonboro. In 1682, 12 years after the city of Charlestown was settled, Roundo and the surrounding areas were known as St. Bartholomew's and began to be settled. According to tradition, the community received its name from a local Native American who lived in the area, whose name was too long to pronounce. So the people called him Roundo because he painted a circular design on his torso. The early English settlers of the parish would build log cabins along water sources and then build large fires to clear the land and indicate their presence to the indigenous people. Interestingly, in 1683, a large Native American tribe made of various indigenous people from out west and Georgia, known as the Yemassee, also moved to the Carolina coast and began to settle there. This was an era of change, which surely disrupted the lives and worried the already established tribes of South Carolina. By 1694, some of the people living in the Roundo began to raise cattle, thus the term Savannah was sometimes placed after Roundo.
In 1704, Colonel Thomas Broughton was issued a warrant for 500 acres over against the red banks of the Edisto. Between the years of 1708 and 1709, Thomas Elliot also received a grant for tracts of land on the Roundo Savannah. From the beginning, the settlers of the parish traded with the indigenous people of the land. For the most part, these people valued the settlers as they brought them from the rock ages and introduced them to the then modern conveniences. On the other hand, the settlers also valued some of the tribes, which became indebted to them and became their ally against common enemies such as various tribes and the Spanish. However, the alliances at the time among the settlers and the tribes were weak and constantly changing. As most arrangements on both parties' behalf were self-serving, using each other to get the upper hand. Cultural differences also caused a number of issues and violent outbreaks. This included the place and treatment of women in society, debt repayment, the method of how crimes should be handled, and the differences in slavery between that of natives and the colonial people. In 1710, Archibald Stobo, founder and builder of Bethel Presbyterian in Jacksonboro on the Roundo, was grounded 640 acres in the area. Yummy, yummy, yummy. By 1715, the native peoples of various tribes, including the former English allies that Yemisi declared war. This was done by executing a gruesome, relentless massacre in which no mercy was given. Luckily, upon hearing of the uprising, some of the settlers in the now-day Colleton County were able to head to the city of Charleston, which at that time was safe behind fortified walls. However, the people in the walled city were only safe from the slaughter and not from the death from disease and starvation. The South Carolina colony was at the brink of faltering. However, many acts of heroism, 
from people such as Governor Craven's Militia, George Chicken and the Goose Creek Men, and George Palmer of Port Royal were able to fight off some of the native forces. Just when no hope seemed to be in sight, an alliance was made with the Cherokee, and the Indian conflict was soon subsided, after which the colonization of South Carolina continued. According to historical records, under the command of Colonel Joseph Glover, on August the 5th, 1755, a muster was held in which Captain William Sanders arrived with his men from Roundo. During the Revolutionary War, in a communication from Marion to Green, written on September the 3rd, 1781, Marion gives a day-by-day -day account of what occurred up until the Battle of Parker's Ferry. In this correspondence, Marion reports, On the 22nd of August, I began to march to the Roundo, arriving the next day, where we expected to meet Colonel Hardin, but found him ill and his troops not yet collected. Following this, on the night of the 26th, we were joined by Colonel Stafford with 150 men and Colonel Hardin with 80, which made the number 400. For context, the Battle of Parker's Ferry was a great victory for the Patriots in which Francis Marion's surprise attack led to heavy casualties and a victory against a force of 540 Hessians, British, and Tory troops. Historically, the Battle of Parker's Ferry was a strategic ambush point as the ferry was utilized to cross the Edisto River. In addition, the Parker Ferry Road is a long road some of which is still unpaved today. This road is also intersected by the Roundo Road. So not right now, I'm going in reverse because I'm trying not to get stuck in a rut. So we're not gonna go to the Sanders Cemetery, which I really wanted to. Besides the Parker Ferry Road and the Roundo Road, there was another road important in the Revolutionary War, a winding road between Cottageville and Jacksonboro Road. Today, this section of road in Roundo is called Sanders Hill. Here, there is an elevation change and the dirt turns to red clay. Entering from the Cottageville Road, at a place called Centerville and traveling about one and a half miles, one can reach this location. To the left is where the home of the Sanders family was and the family cemetery. On the right side of the road is also a hill that at one time had tombstones there. The last of these tombstones carried the name Malachi Ford. He was one of the first sons of Thomas Ford and married into the Sanders family. It was here on Sanders Hill on the Roundo that Count 
Thaddeus Pusico, engineer in General Green's army, selected this place for encampment on December the 7th, 1781. Thaddeus was a Polish general who came to America at the start of the Revolutionary War. He helped engineer forts and was a great value to Green, and so he was chosen by Green to go south with him. Thaddeus's main objective was to find a location for the army which could protect the General Assembly. Author William Johnson in his history of the period describes their march from Orangeburg by the way of Rillsburgers, Indian Field Road, to Ferguson Mill where they crossed the Edisto River and then on to Sanders Hill on the Roundo. When the army arrived, Green dispatched communications to Marion and others. Four of these letters are still preserved today two in which Green states he is at the headquarters on the Roundo, and two others that state that he is at the Sanders Plantation on the Roundo. It is documented that at this time, the Continental Army was in rags, needing to find rest. Their morale was at an all-time low, and that the luxuriant land and home-like atmosphere and hospitality was never more appreciated than by the war-weary soldiers. And so the distinguished Count gets the credit for giving Rando the opportunity to serve the Continental Army in its greatest hour of need. However, you do not have to look beyond Roundo to find heroes during the Revolutionary War. For example, William Clary Snipes of the Roundo was a distinguished officer. He was a captain in Colonel Joseph Glover's Colleton County Regiment. In addition, while Colonel Joseph Glover died at age 56 at his county seat in Goose Creek and was buried there at Grove Hall Plantation, he also had residence in St. Bartholomew's. It was situated about two miles northwest of Jacksonboro and two miles from the Edisto River. It was known as Bluefield Plantation and was bordered by the land of Colonel Isaac Haynes, revolutionary martyr whose plantation, Hain Hall, while sometimes listed as a Jacksonboro residence, was also found on the Roundo. Colonel Glover also had a resident opposite of Willtown, and it was called Hasawasee Plantation. On May 4, 1757, in a council journal of South Carolina, it refers to Colonel Joseph Glover and Lieutenant William Glover, both of the Roundo Company Regiment. Besides Snipe, Glover, and Haynes, Captain Joseph Kroger was also influential in the Revolutionary War, so much so that the daughters of the American Revolution had a marble memorial placed on his tomb at Gruber Cemetery. According to the book, A Narrative of Colleton County, on March 24, 1785, an act was passed that authorized the building of public roads from the Pond Pond to the Roundo Swamp. Just a half a mile was the Appleby Bridge, which is now abandoned. After its construction in 1805, Joseph Kroger relinquished his rights to the ferry at Lewis Box Plantation. However, another ferry came into use at Sandy Hook to cross the Edisto, and Kroger took a position there.
In the 1800s, Miss Eliza Clitheroe, wife of Dr. Clitheroe of the Roundo, documented her family's summer stay in the summer resort that would become Walterboro. Her diary is how we know so much about the summer log homes that offered a healthy reprieve. In addition, she also detailed in her diary how the resort was run and its activities. The heroes of the Roundo did not stop at the Revolutionary War. During the war between the states, Colleton County had several outfits. These organizations include the Colleton Rifles, the Wade Hampton Colleton Volunteers, the Colleton Mounted Rifles, and the Roundo Company, commanded by Edward Woods. In 1820, the site for the Walterboro Courthouse and Jail was decided upon. Three acres for $50 an acre were purchased, and the town's roads were laid out. Specifications were agreed upon, and the contract was signed by Colonel William N. Thompson of the Red Bank Roundo Cottageville section of the county. In addition, while I know nothing about the schools in the area, I do know that Roundo had at least three. I have read that there was a Hall School, a School Branch School, and a Snipe School, of which the latter a plaque can be seen across from Mount Sinai Church. Today, while the community of Roundo is nothing more than a crossroad which offers a post office and a farm supply store, there is still a lot to see and do. The green landscape of the Roundo is breathtaking and is watered by various creeks such as the Chessie, Fuller Swamp Creek, and Sandy Dam Creek. However, Roundo is also bordered by, by the larger Horseshoe Creek and Edisto River. No matter what road you take, while driving through, you'll notice many fenced areas holding horses and other livestock, old farms and dirt roads. The houses in the Roundo community vary from trailers to old homesteads to massive million-dollar homes. The large area that is considered the Roundo is also home to various communities such as Gloverville, Burr Hill, Davis Hill, and Hoyts, just to name a few. If by chance you're ever lucky enough to find yourself in Roundo, South Carolina, I recommend that you do at least some of the following 10 things. Number one, get eggs or chickens at the Fowl Farms or go to Max Farm Supply for some fresh produce. Number two, Go to Isaac Haynes' grave, which I mentioned in my Jacksonboro video, but its address is actually Roundo. Number three, float down the Horseshoe Creek or Edisto River. Number four, visit a cemetery. You don't normally get an adrenaline rush from visiting cemeteries, but in Roundo that is not the case. It can be quite a scavenger hunt. 
you never know what road you might end up on. The Roundo cemeteries include the Glory Bound Memorial Gardens, Hoyt Cemetery, Grubber Cemetery, Kinsey Cemetery, the Old Roundo Cemetery, Spell Cemetery, Church Hill Cemetery, and Sanders Cemetery. Number three, visit a church. Unlike the cemeteries, you may not need a four-wheel drive, but they're still very interesting to see. The churches of Roundo include Galilee Baptist Church, Mount Zion Baptist Church, Aimwell Church, Bethel Presbyterian Church and its cemetery, Trident AME Church, Providence Church, Calvary, Mount Sinai, Canaan, and St. Mark's, and, of course, the Pon Pon and Bethel Ruins. Number four, drive down the Parker's Ferry Road and look over the Edisto River. This road goes from Roundo to Jacksonboro to even Ridgeville. And the opposite side of the road in Charleston County is even paved. Number five, go hunting. Roundo has an abundance of hunt clubs, such as the Horse Pen Creek Hunt Club, Roundo Fox Hunt Club, Iron Tract Hunt Club, and Hain Hall Hunt Club, just to name a few. Of course, there will be a membership fee, and you may need a dog, as deer hunting in the swampy areas of the low country is different than other areas of the state. Number six, check out the South 40 website to see if they are hosting a public event. South 40 is a 40-acre farm turned into a wedding venue and reception hall. It was started in 1999, and the venue offers over 7,000 square foot of space, with changing rooms, a kitchen, and of course, restrooms. It can hold up to 650 guests, and prices vary, but can range from $2,000. In the past, the venue has hosted events like a family fun day at Easter, a holiday market during December, and even a banquet for the Waterfowl Association. Number seven, enjoy a glass of wine at Bowman Vineyard. Number eight, contact the Gullah Sweetgrass Basket Creations in Roundo, South Carolina, and see if you can buy a sweetgrass basket. Number nine, Eat at one of the two restaurants in Roundo, South Carolina. That would be Church's Chicken or Ace Basin Fish Camp, both of which are near Jacksonboro. Number 10. Go to the Bluefield Farms for shooting activities or maybe even horseback riding. And as a bonus, if you find yourself in Roundo, South Carolina, Go to the Roundo Crossroads near the post office and look for a pole. The pole once held a historical marker all about Nathaniel Green and his time in Roundo, South Carolina. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has inspired you to explore the area of Roundo, South Carolina. If you like this video, please like it, and as always, thanks for watching.